Hi, my name is Peter and welcome to my channel Gotham Wanderer. In today's episode I'm going to give you a little closer look at the character of Adam Warlock. That's another hero who's getting closer to the MCU thanks to the Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm going to show you 7 things you didn't know about Adam Warlock. Probably. We start from the beginning, which is who Adam is and where he came from. He was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, one of the most popular duos in Marvel world. He was first featured in comics in 1967. He was created by a group of mad scientists called the Enclave. Their goal was to create a perfect, flawless man as the beginning of a whole new race that would one day take over the Earth. Of course, it couldn't have been otherwise. And the Fantastic Four prevented such a turn of events, but they were able to do so only after Adam Warlock was born, or otherwise hatched, because yes, as we saw at the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy, he was born like a butterfly out of cocoon. The Guardians of the Galaxy. As it turns out, he was one of the first members of this cosmic and bizarre group. They made their first comic book debut in 1969, just two years after Adam Warlock. At the time, however, the Guardians were not completely reminiscent of what the MCU had us used to. It was a group of heroes fighting for freedom and rebelling against an alien called Badoon, who conquered the Earth and all its colonies. Yes, colonies, because history was set in a distant future, where humanity was already interplanetary species. In 2008, the history of the Guardians was rewritten in a more accessible way for the film audience, and it was in this issue that Adam became the founder of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and he remained so for a whole year until he wanted to restart the whole timeline. As a result, he transformed into Magus, who was the personification of his evil dark side and died, what by the way has become a tradition in the case of his comic books. He may not look, but he is one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe, to such extent that he is one of the few that can wield the power of the Infinity Stones to help him fulfill his duties. He was given a Soul Stone, which helped him convert evil characters on the right path. Shortly afterwards, however, he discovered that there were still five stones, which later he helped to hide from the Thanos, with whom he has unusual relationship. Because looking at the comic book history, they cooperated with each other almost as many times as they fought on two different sides of the barricade. So, what kind of character Adam Warlock really is? Good or maybe bad? In teasers of the third volume of the Guardians of the Galaxy, he looks more like an opponent of our heroes than their ally. It seems to me that initially there may be an argument or misunderstanding between them and finally they will join forces at the end of the film or in subsequent productions. And James Gunn has stated that Adam Warlock could play a significant role in the future of the MCU. Ok, so why the quarrel between the characters? The matter can be quite trivial and this is because in Adam Warlock's comics he had a close relationship with none other than Gamora, on which the next part of the film series is also to focus. So, I wouldn't be surprised if this element of the comics also hit the big screen in some form and we will see a clash of Star-Lord character with Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock could start a whole new series of Guardians of the Galaxy, except that they will no longer be called Guardians, but the Infinity Watch, which he founded in the comics. New team was created after the defeat of Thanos where each of its members, including Adam, received one of the Infinity Stones, which they had to defend from any threats. Who is in the new team? Well, it's Gamora, Drax, Star-Lord or even Doctor Strange. It seems to me that the next few films would be a perfect moment to introduce a group that Strange would join, and yet there will undoubtedly be changes from the comics, because for example Dave Batista, Drax's character, has already revealed that third part of the Guardians will be his last film in the MCU. We already know that Warlock is a powerful character, powerful enough that he even wielded the Silver Surfer's board, and he was merely a passenger on his own spacecraft, so one of the Galactus' most powerful subordinates had to give away to a stronger one. 
However, this does not change the fact that their paths crossed many times in the comics. Once, they even plotted together against Thanos. However, the first attempt to defeat him ended in failure. So, who knows, maybe Surfer will appear in the latest movie with the Guardians or in one of them. Anyway, the same goes for the Fantastic Four, which has related stories to Warlock. So, it all comes together. Also, maybe Marvel will surprise us with more interesting stories and crossovers. The Return of Thanos could also be an interesting crossover. Specifically, I'm talking about 2003 Marvel Universe The End comic book series created by Jim Sterling, the creator of many members of the Guardians, such as Jax, or even the character of Thanos. In this story, Thanos absorbs the so-called Heart of the Universe, an incredibly powerful cosmic object. Why? He wanted to save the universe from destruction. Yes, again, in his own bizarre way. However, it did the opposite and the universe was destroyed, and it was Adam Warlock who helped convince Thanos to restore the state of the universe from before the tragedy, which ultimately costs Thanos his life. This could be an interesting base for the future stories in the MCU. I don't think fans would complain about the return of the mighty titan in the refreshed form. Would you like to see it on the big screen? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and click the like button if you like the video.